Hi everyone, this is Guan Dao Yang. I will present my paper Geometric Processing with the Neural Fields. This work is a collaboration with Serge, Perot, and Valadola. Geometric processing refers to manipulation of geometric data, data that representing shapes. Typical geometric processing tasks include in smoothing, sharpening, and deformation. These tasks have been powering many real-world applications, including entertainment and industrial design. Traditionally, most geometric processing algorithms represent surfaces using meshes. Meshes discretize surface into a list of polygons. While meshes are easy to interpret and allow fast access to local neighborhood, designing an algorithm to manipulate meshes can be difficult, since the algorithm needs to maintain the discretization quality very carefully. This leads to a question. Is there a better way to represent geometric data for algorithms? One alternative is implicit fields. Implicit field is a function that maps a spatial coordinate to a scalar. Shape is defined as a level set of such field function. Reason will chain neural networks to approximate the value of the field function, leading to a class of representation we call neural fields. Neural fields has many advantages. They inherit the strength of implicit fields, being flexible for topological changes. They also resolve some issues storing implicit fields in voxels. As research shows, the neural fields are very compact and they allow sampling in arbitrary resolution. Motivated by these advantages, we ask, are we able to do geometric processing entirely using neural fields? Answering this question is non-trivial, since geometric processing is fundamentally an under-constrained problem. Usually, the algorithm is given a shape and some user specification as input. The user specification are usually very sparse, checking one point or clicking several buttons. With such limited input, algorithms are expected to output shapes that fulfill the user specification. It's not hard to see that there are potentially infinite many of plausible answers. For example, all of these shapes fulfill the user specification, but some are better candidate than the others. To navigate among these possibilities, Algorithm needs to encode some sort of priors that prefer one shape over the others. In this paper, we will focus on physics-inspired prior. Such prior prefers shapes that behave according to real-world physics rule. For example, shapes tend to have smooth surface. They are usually resistant to bending and stretching. Physics-inspired prior tend to generalize well, so it has been leveraged in many state-of-the-art methods. Now the question is, how do we quantify such prior in our algorithm? If the surface parameterization is known, then one can compute quantities such as surface normal, area, and curvature using differential geometry. This quantity can then be used to describe the physics inspired prior. However, we don't usually have access to surface parameterization. If the shape is representing as a mesh, then one can approximate these properties using discrete differential geometry. In our setting, shapes are represented using neural fields. More specifically, the surface is made of coordinates that the network will evaluate to zero. This requires a fundamentally different formulation to quantify the surface prior. Fortunately, with recent advances in autograph frameworks, positional encoding, and smooth activation function, we can compute higher order and non vanishing derivative of neural fields. This will allow us to compute surface property for describing physics inspired priors. We hypothesize that geometric processing with neural fields can be done in the following way. For each task, we will design the loss function. This loss function can capture necessary prior and make sure that the user specification are satisfied. Minimizing such loss will produce a neural field representing the output. Our paper will provide a proof of concept that this is indeed possible. For the rest of this video, we will take deformation as an example to show that how this can be done. In our shape deformation setting, we assume the input shape is represented by the zero level set of a neural field, F. We assume that F approximates the sine distance field of this shape. The user will specify a set of service points as handle they want to manipulate. For each handle point, the user will further specify a target point, indicating where the user wants the handle point to land after deformation. Note that the target point can be the same as the handle point, indicating that the handle stays static. With this, the algorithm should output the neural fields whose zero level set is the shape that not only satisfy user specification, but also resemble natural deformation. 
What is considered a natural deformation? One common type of deformation is elastic deformation. Elastic deformation assumes materials to have tendency to recover to its original shape. In other words, the shape has some resistance to bending and stretching. Our algorithm will design a prior that encourages elastic deformation. Our strategy is to minimize the amount of bending and stretching happen to each infinitesimal patches. We will achieve this in three steps. First, we will sample points from the zero ISO surface of the input neural fields. We will then find the corresponding points in the deformed neural fields. Finally, we will compare these two infinitesimal patches to compute the amount of stretching and bending happened between them. Let's start with sampling. To sample points from the zero level set, we use a nice property of the sign distance function. For any point x in the space, if we take the step negative fx times surface normal nx, then we will land on the closest point to x located at the zero level set. With this property, we can move uniformly sample point towards zero iso surface to create a sample. However, this will result in points concentrated near the high curvature area. To alleviate this issue, we additionally filter out uniformly sample points that are too far away from the zero ISO surface, and then moving them toward it. And then this simple rejection step produces a very uniform samples. Now that we will obtain point sample from the input shapes, we need to find its corresponding points in the deformed shape. One way to achieve this is to warp the space with the neural field. Specifically, we want to define the output field g theta to be f of d theta x, where d theta is a neural field that warps the deformed space towards the input space. Ideally, we want the mapping d theta to be invertible to obtain good correspondence. To achieve the invertibility, we leverage the invertible residual network architecture. However, naively doing so results in overly smooth deformation without any rotation. To alleviate this issue, we extend the invertible residual block with positional encoding. This allows us to generate deformation with appropriate rotation. Now we will obtain correspondence between input and the deformed space. Our final step is to compare infinitesimal patches near these correspondences to measure the amount of stretching and bending. Intuitively, stretching a surface will result in the change of the length of some tangent vectors. For example, if this patch was stretched by the force going along the red arrow direction, this tangent vector along that direction will become longer. Since the vector norm can be defined by the dot product, the stretching can then be characterized as the change of tangent dot product. Note that we can relate the tangent dot product to the spatial dot product by a projection matrix. We also know that tangent vectors can be transformed by the Jacobians to, of the deformation field. With this, we define a stretch loss that minimizes the change of tangent dot product. Now let's look at bending. Bending can be intuitively understood as the change of curvature. For example, bending happens when one surface changes from being flat to highly curved or being curved to highly flat. With that said, the resistance to bending can be modeled as minimizing the change of curvature. Now the question is, how do we measure curvature? Intuitively, curvature can be characterized by the change of tangent dot product along the surface normal direction. For example, if we move the levels along the surface normal direction in a constant speed and observe how the tangent the vectors change, we will notice that in low curvature area, tangent vector will stay roughly the same, while in high curvature area, the tangent vectors will change a lot. Such change can be captured by the Hessian matrix of the sine distance function. With that, we will define our bending loss to measure the change of curvature by computing the adjusted change of Hessian before and after deformation. Now let's try to put everything together. We now have losses that encode the resistance to stretching and bending. Our final training objective will include these two losses and a loss that enforces the model to satisfy user specification. We will use Atom Optimizer to minimize these losses to find the appropriate deformation fields. 
Here are some deformation results for our algorithm. Our method is capable of giving very natural deformation to very high resolution shapes. Please refer to our paper for more results and detailed derivation. To summarize, our paper provides a proof of concept that geometric processing can be done entirely using neural fields. We hope to see more research applying neural fields for geometric processing tasks in the future. Please check out our paper and code. Thank you so much for listening.